Hi, my name is Kieran Milne. I'm a tech lead with the Juniper Networks Certification Program in Education Services here at Juniper Networks. We're going to continue our Class of Service Basics Learning Bite series, and in this one, we'll cover policing. So our first slide, as always here, discusses the uh, typical cost stages as a packet moves through a Junos device. Uh, I'm not going to spend any time here, but you're welcome to pause this slide and, uh, and review the, the topics as you like. So policing, well, what is policing? In a nutshell, policing controls burstiness of inbound traffic. Uh, obviously in IP networks, traffic doesn't always flow smoothly. It, it comes in bursts and then it gets quiet and, and uh, you, know, you can overload a device um, fairly easily in certain situations. And so policing can help control that, those bursts of inbound traffic. And what you can do with policers is essentially define what's considered too much traffic and, and take some action based on that. Uh, you know, when that occurs. Um, another way to think of policing is to provide kind of a first stage of congestion management. There are management uh, or congestion management elements within a Junos device further along in the cost process, but this is that first chance as traffic enters or arrives at your device to really control traffic as a first stage of, of congestion management. So you can see in the diagram here, we have data entering our device, going into the policer, and really there are two kind of actions that can, that can happen. The first is when traffic is within thresholds, so acceptable uh, parameters, it, it's accepted and uh, passed along further for more cost processing. And then the alternative is when you have too much traffic, well, you can drop that traffic. It's just too much. You don't want to have it in your device, so you don't overload the entire device, so you drop that traffic. Now, there's a, another alternative there. Uh, instead of dropping traffic that, that is exceeding your thresholds, well, you can keep it and make it a lower priority. So further on in the cost processing uh, in the device, uh, you can take that traffic and perhaps drop it at a later time or, or treat it um, you know, less good than, than other traffic. In terms of how policing works, uh, thresholds are really the key to everything. Uh, what you want to do with policing is determine when traffic is, is either in profile, uh, so acceptable, or, or if it's exceeding, it's, it's exceeding the thresholds, and it's called excess traffic. Now, the two main thresholds uh, you talk about with policers are bandwidth and burst size. So bandwidth is as you would expect. It's the data rate of traffic being sent through an interface, or the policer in this case. Uh, and the burst size is... Uh, how much data is being sent through at a given moment? What's the volume of data? Um, bandwidth is measured in bits per second, and burst size is a volume of data measured in, in bytes. Now, the key here is that both thresholds are used together. So it's not a one or the other situation. It's a, a case of them being used in combination. So you exceed a certain bandwidth threshold, and when you exceed it, then a certain volume of data, a certain burst size, uh, accumulates, and those two together are what trigger what's called excess traffic, when you can treat that traffic differently. So as we say here, you know, you, you, you can take that excess traffic, and we, as we said earlier, you can drop it, or it can be living or it can be given lower priority or what have you. In terms of configuration, there are two general uh, steps to, to uh, working with policers. The first is, of course, to configure the policer itself. Uh, and the second is to apply it or reference it something. Like much of uh, Juno's configuration, you know, you configure an element, but it doesn't do anything until you apply it somewhere. So there are a couple of ways to do that. You can apply a policer uh, directly to an interface, an interface policer, or you can be more granular and apply it within a firewall filter. And we're going to see an example of that coming up on our uh, example page here. So we have an example of what's called a hard policer. And the reason for that is, uh, if you look on the right side, you know, conceptually, we're either going to accept this traffic, it's in profile, or we're simply going to discard it because it's excess. So the first component of our configuration is at the bottom left here. There is the policer configuration. We are under the firewall stanza. And we have uh, our policer, and there you can see the couple of, of the thresholds that we were talking about, bandwidth limit and burst size limit. So two megabits per second here for the bandwidth limit, and in this particular case, a burst size limit of five kilobytes. And the action is discard. So when we exceed this traffic, uh, the, these thresholds with our traffic, then we discard it. Now we're going to reference 
our uh, police are within a firewall filter here. So we've got a filter called hard filter, and there is a term that, that states that traffic coming in from source address 101010, so the 101010 network, uh, the action is send that traffic to the policer. And so the traffic will flow down through the policer, run through the thresholds, and one of two things will happen. Either it exceeds the thresholds and it's discarded, as the policer says, or the traffic is within the parameters, it's in profile, and it's sent back to the firewall filter, and you can see the action in the firewall filter is to accept the traffic. So those are your, your hard policing mechanisms right there. Now, we take this firewall filter, and of course we have to apply the firewall filter uh, somewhere where traffic is going to flow through it, and that takes us to our, our uh, bottom right corner there, the third component, and that is to apply this to an interface, and that's a standard, you know, applying a, a firewall filter to a, an inbound interface. So that takes us to our demo portion of the uh, the learning byte here. So we're going to flip over to uh, a small lab network. We have a host, as you can see on the diagram there. We're going to be sending some traffic through that R6 router and into the network. We're going to apply a policer on the ingress interface, GE006 there, and we'll watch some of the counters and, and use some show commands on the egress side to confirm whether traffic is getting through or getting policed and, and how it's all working. All right, so we're into our lab setup here, and let me just show you around. First of all, uh, there are two windows open here. The first is our host that will generate the traffic to send through our Junos device and into the network. And we have our actual router here. So we're on the router called R6 in this case. And I've pulled up a couple of things to show you just to, to set the stage here. First of all, I've done a show firewall command, and you can see a couple of things. First of all, there's a firewall filter in place here. It's called MF Classifier, and it has a term that matches TCP port 80, so HTTP traffic, and the resulting action is to assign that incoming traffic to the forwarding class called BE Data on this device. So there's our firewall filter. The next thing you can see here in the firewall stanza is a policer called Hard Policer, and I've put some values in here to represent the thresholds, so a band a bandwidth limit of 400k and a burst size limit of 5 uh, kilobytes. And the action, of course, is to discard when you exceed those thresholds. So there's our, our uh, firewall stanza. Now, one note is that the policer is not referenced in the firewall filter at this point. So we'll start with that as our basis. Just underneath that here, you can see I've entered the show interfaces GE006 command. And you can simply see that the firewall filter, with no policer yet, uh, is nevertheless implemented as an input filter on this interface. So we've got a firewall filter in place, but no policing uh, in place just yet. Now, of course, nothing's going to happen from a policing perspective until we add the policer into the firewall filter, so let's do that now. There we go. So we check out our firewall stanza again, and now you can see we've got our policer statement within the firewall filter. So when we commit this, we're going to be actually implementing our firewall filter with its policer included, and we'll, uh, we'll see what happens next after that. So I'm just going to clear a couple of uh, our, our um, logs and, and filter uh, monitoring mechanisms here, our counters, and uh, we'll be able to see some things as we uh, send some traffic and watch what happens. Let me just clear these counters here. There we go. Now let me switch over to the traffic generator. We're going to use the HPing utility here on this, uh, this host device. We're going to hit an IP address that's across this device and into the network. We're going to send 100 packets, that's what this represents, and we're going to send it to port 80. So here we go. So what we notice here is we sent our 100 packets, but there's no packet loss. Nothing happened here. So let's go over and just check a couple of uh, counters. First of all, here's our policer counter, and you can see that nothing got dropped. And I'll just uh, pull up one more here.
when we look at our co cost counters here, our Q counters, there's our BE data forwarding class, and you can see that all 100 packets went through successfully. There's an extra packet because there's some a uh, bit of extra traffic uh, flowing through our network on occasion here. But you can see essentially that everything is everything went through fine. There was no issue. Now there's a reason for that, and that is simply that we didn't exceed our thresholds for the policer. We didn't send enough data or enough throughput or enough bursting data. And so I'm going to clear these uh, counters and we'll try something here to, to help make that happen this time. There we go. Now let me just go back here and I'm going to add an extra switch a knob onto this this command here and it's a command that adds um, data to the packets. So these packets have been essentially empty so far so there's just simply not enough amount of them, enough volume going through the interface as it arrives at the Junos device. So what I'm doing here is I'm bulking up these packets with 1400 bytes each of data and so that should kind of um, you know, increase the volume as it enters the device. So let's get that going here and see what happens. So what we can see this time is we've got 27% packet loss. So about 27 out of the 100 packets uh, were dropped. They got they, they they were lost. So let's see what our log uh, or our counters rather show us this time. First of all, our policer counter. Well, there we go. 27 packets that matches perfectly. Uh, against the the hosts information and if we do a show command against our Q counters there's our BE000 you can see 77 packets got through but the rest were dropped and that's nearly exactly uh, how many we've seen with the other counters so there's a policer uh, in effect on our Junos device all right so to finish off let's look at some other resources for uh, more cost information for you uh, the first is the note that, you know, cost is a large topic covering a, a lot of different aspects. Uh, and it also can be a little bit particular to the hardware platform you're using. Uh, some of the fine-tuned details can be slightly different across platforms. So you'll definitely want to check out your own product documentation uh, and tech pubs to, to ensure that you're, uh, you know, looking at the information specific to your device. The next resource is Learning Bytes. These Learning Bytes... Um, Regarding cost basics, we are partway into our series here. You're certainly welcome to go on and check out the next one on uh, policing, or rather, queuing and scheduling. Uh, training courses, Junos Writing Essentials has a chapter on, on costs. And then the class of service course itself, two days long, uh, there's a, a large policing chapter that goes into far more detail than we were able to hear. Uh, it also gets into advanced policing like uh, three color markers, hierarchical policing, and uh, applying policers in different ways to logical interfaces, physical interfaces, and uh, protocol families as well. So different permutations of, of policing. Product documentation, as I mentioned, and there's a nice day one guide, a free downloadable day one guide called Deploying Basic QoS, and it does a nice job of walking through um, getting QoS or COS implemented in your network. So that takes us to the end of this learning bite. Hope you enjoyed it, and we will talk to you next time. Bye for now. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.